is of Graham Taylor. He was a young manager at Lincoln City with strong principles and definite potential to go right to the top. Thirteen years on, he's reached the top and is the focus of our attention once again as we go behind the scenes for an extended and quite revealing profile of the New England manager. Since 1977, his principles may not have changed, but his dress sense and his hairstyle certainly have. Le miroir entre les fenêtres, où est le bureau? Où est le bureau? Où est le bureau? Où est le bureau? <laughs> I tell you what, Angela, I don't know where the bureau is, but uh, when we get in the European Cup, you can have a complimentary ticket. Thank you. Uh, we'll make the two changes in the senior squad. That's Steve Hodge for Nigel Winterburn. We'll bring Ian Wright in for Gary Pallister. Yeah. And then at the uh, standby players, we'll bring Nigel... Nigel Winterburn back in straight away! That came from their keeper's throw out to this fella. In terms of attacking the man, you're getting somebody to close him down and then your other fella that's coming is coming in there to support and make the angle. But we want to do that at the same time. We don't want to see any ball sitting any of the opposition. I don't want to see the ball still. If it's one touch, we play it off one. If it's two touch, it's controlled and then it's played away again. I think that I've got qualities as regards coaching. I think that's what I ought to be doing. And in fact, I think there's a danger as regards the, the, the manager's job that I have at present because of everything that you're involved with that I may end up doing less and less of the coaching. But I do do um, the coaching with the first team. I do organise the training sessions and I enjoy doing it because I feel that that is my strength. Uh, I love watching that. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> if the knees would stand up to it as much now, I wish they would. But it's uh, it is really getting out onto a football pitch and now i'm very very fortunate because i can actually go onto a football pitch with the uh, people who've been chosen to play for england but more than that because of what i have tried to involve myself i can go around to the clubs i can sometimes watch i can sometimes be in on their training pitches see what they're doing and it's the atmosphere and it's the smell of being in on the factory floor so to speak <laughs> Well, I'm just coming like that. How are you? All right. Nice Good. to see you as well. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're going to see the two lads this morning. Yeah. Well, just, there is just one. Well, not a problem. Um, Gary, they're in separate places. Gary's down the track with the players, right, yeah. and Gaz is across in the uh, treatment room. He's going to be having treatment all day. So if you want to pop over there. Yeah. What's he uh, got? Now he's had a thigh strain. He had it um, before the Crystal Palace game, mm. and. Um, looked doubtful, but he got through that one all right. Yeah. And then he was right during the week, he's come back again on Saturday yeah. against Villa. Uh, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. A bit of strain on yeah. me. Just, oh, just happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Too bad. Just coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing well. Hi, all, all right. right. Yeah. Pop a few wins. Yeah. You all right, Halsey? Yeah, yeah. It's all been blown up out of all proportion again, is it, like? Yeah. Hey? I mean, it doesn't really matter what other people think, because I think both you and David Platt do a little bit of everything that midfield players should do. Mm -hmm. You know, you're back in there, you can you do your defensive work, you intercept, you get a tattling, you both get forward, you both score goals. The only thing that you've got to do at, at certain times is that just that business of just working together, isn't it? Together, it's like yeah. one in and, and one out. Yeah. What do you actually find, sort of working and playing with him, anyhow? Brilliant. Yeah. I mean, obviously everyone recognises his work rate, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. It's playing Brian Robson, like his work rate, you know, and Dave's yeah. exactly the same. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I mean, I work on my work rate all the time. Yeah. And like I say, I think I showed in the World Cup that I can work. Yes. Yeah. Um, obviously, and the other thing is, you know, I love, I just love going forward, forward yeah. and just helping. But I mean, even Dave, I mean, Dave Platt is a forward fella as well. Yeah. And I think, like you say, it's just got to work out um, yeah. who's going to go at the time, you know. I think it's important that you and and Platty certainly get your understanding right. But I think it's just as important that somebody from the back steps into that midfield area. So well. that in fact people don't break at us. Do you see what I mean? Uh -huh. That's what I'm trying to push at. The back people tightening up behind you. Yeah. So that you and or Platty can get your forward runs with no worries that people will break at us. But it's even more important, range. people like Chrissy Waddle and, and John Barnes can play as far forward as possible. As I say, and yourself, everything's okay. Oh, you yeah. Got to... Very important, a few stupid more stories about... Yeah. See, I don't, like I say, I don't read them. No. I don't read them, just 
See, I, it's funny because I come in and I don't read it. I, I don't read the papers, you know, because the only people are upset is. And um, now all of a sudden you come to train and say, God, you see what thing you wrote about you? And I go, oh, yeah. why did you tell us? Yeah, I think the big thing is to keep everything in perspective. Yeah, and just go on. I do. I just, go, oh, I just go and fishing. Get, and just get when you get on a pitch, anyhow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just go fishing and everything. Hope that that we don't want any major. No. But I mean, I know that. I know that they'll look after you properly and, and mm. get that sorted out, anyhow. Yeah. Other than that, Paul. It's just a question of fortnight's time, getting in together and, you know, I mean, the whole thing now is geared, really, to us sort of certainly qualifying and we're starting on, on October. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, so it should be OK. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Good luck. No problem. Cheers, boss. All right. I'll just help him up now because... Yeah, because no, I'm very, very... You know, it's, 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 oh, oh, cheers. Yeah. Hey, I'll hey, And if he behaves himself, I'll, yeah. I'll give him a signed copy of my record. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an 83 year old mother in law that wants his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no problem. Go on, Neil, you got him now. Stay with it, Kevin. Pump your arms, keep your arms along your side, you're wagging them. Pump them, pump them. Well done, well done. Good. Well done, Good. Well done Neil. Well done, Kevin. What do you do? 26-27. Brilliant running. Come on, don't let one get away from the other. Stay with it, Stu. Come on, son. Great running, Gary. Right through, right through. Right through. 24 25. We're now going over to the England captain, who has just been, who's likely to vomit on me because he's, he's really mad. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this was the time we would like to do an interview with Gary Lineker. Oh, lovely. Yeah. We'll let him get his breath back. It's about 25 minutes. Straight here. Been doing it every week or something. About three weeks. Only three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. So you get tomorrow off. Some good running, guys. Yeah. Oh, and the manager comes and the England manager. <laughs> and the stopwatch. <laughs> it brings it out a bit, I think. <laughs> it's a bit too far for me, really. This is where you earn your money. People only see it sort of three o'clock to twenty to five, which is right and proper. But to get it right at three o'clock on a Saturday, you've got to do a bit of background work as well on the Monday to Friday, which is a little bit of a part of it. For, and I think it's the same, you know, in many respects. If there are any youngsters are watching, you can get a position that Gary Lineker's got, who is now the captain of his country. But you have to keep working hard. And all the very top performers at any profession, not just professional football, as well as the talent that they have, they work hard. As if to prove that also applies to a manager whose team only plays once a month, Taylor's next stop that same day is Ibrox Park. Another game. He wants to monitor the form of and renew personal contact with three England men who play their club football north of the border. Does he keep Trevor Stephen on the subs bench against Poland? Is Gary Stevens playing well enough to regain his right back spot from Lee Dixon? And is goalkeeper Chris Woods getting enough of the right sort of practice? His contribution came in the wrong penalty area from the point of view of a manager keen to discuss the performance against Hungary. So when, you, when teams do set back, you get bogged down a little yeah. bit, don't you? You get so much of the ball. Yeah. And it's being patient and, and then just yes. getting forward at the right times and getting it wide. To, to get it I think like in the yeah. second half, um, we did try to thread it. You mentioned we did try to thread, thread it. it through, I and yeah. I think it was a bit like that out there tonight yeah. for us. Yeah. So I thought all in all it went okay. I, th I mean, I haven't been part of the preview. I think I've listened to... to uh... In you come, Chris. Come here, son. 50p for you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I bet Graham Kelly that you'd win 6-0 tonight, and he said 7-0. Oh, now you missed the penalty, son. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, oh, I was forced. Hey? I was forced. It's a spectator sport, and people come to be entertained. They come to be excited. They come to. Ooh, and, uh, now, where does that action take place? That action to make people feel like that, to get people excited, takes place in the respective penalty boxes. Now, that means that you want the ball in the penalty box particularly in the opposition's penalty box, as often as possible. How we get it there, and this is what probably a lot of people say is wrong with English football anyhow, but to a degree, the English supporter doesn't concern himself over much 
as long as his team is getting the ball in the, in the penalty box. But it concerns me and it concerns my team and that's what we work on. Those fundamental beliefs formed in his lower division days later attracted an anti-Taylor lobby. His detractors disliked what they called the long ball game. Some argued it would harm English football long term. But Watford stormed through the divisions on the back of a direct route to goal, celebrating the club's sudden rise to prominence, sticking to a simple formula with attention to corners and throw-ins. The critics questioned whether Taylor's methods could work at a higher level. But his answer to that was clear. If you say to me, will you change your approach or your attitude to the game, I will say quite emphatically, no. Now, as regards style, and I leave it to all the experts to decide what style we're giving. I mean, certainly, uh, we've been described in various quarters sometimes as simply a kick and rush side. I find that quite amazing that people in the game can say, well, there's a kick and rush side, and there we are sitting second in the, the, in the division with 70-odd goals scored, only 30-odd conceded. If it is as simple as that, then I think that everybody ought to kick and rush it. But you know as well as I do, John, it's not that. No, and it may be more sophisticated in the first is the point I'm making. More sophisticated. I hate that word being used where football's concerned. Football's a, uh, football is a simple game. It's not a sophisticated game. It's a, it's a game for the man on the terraces. It's a game to excite the people. And I know this, that whatever level of football I watch, never mind have been involved in, the man on the terrace, when he sees something that is going to be exciting and create excitement, and usually it's in and around the penalty box, he will start to take great interest. He is not interested, in my opinion, of watching people play 15 and 16 consecutive passes in their own half of the field. Now, if we try to tell him he has to become more sophisticated, I think what he will say to us, as in fact he has been saying in the last few years, I'm not going to bother coming and watching you, because I just want to get excited about the whole thing. I hate sophisticated football. That interview took place just after we had gained promotion uh, from the second division to the first division at Watford. And what was now happening there, as you well know, was that this young lad, this country bumpkin who'd come from Lincoln, when Watford were in the fourth division, and then fourth and third seemed all right, fight, but now they got into the second division, and suddenly their promotion to the first division, and we were beginning to ruffle a few feathers of the people who were there. And of course, as you well know on, we went on and did that in the first division. And what that caused, it caused a little bit of, 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 of suddenly we weren't the boys that were going to be patted on the head and say, well, you're all right, nice, but they're in the second and third division. We weren't going to go away. And out of all of that came that little period of time in my career, which was a good preparation in many respects for the job I'm now in, where you suddenly came across people who suddenly the football on the pitch was secondary to personalities. That all of a sudden the political side of things began to, I began to experience that for the first time in my career. And sort of in a naive sort of way, I sort of pretty well understood that if a side was um, wholesome, if it played within the laws of the game, if it looked as if it was enjoying itself and it was successful, everybody would be pleased. But I learnt very quickly that that's not really the case in life, never mind in football. Those people who weren't pleased are now waiting to see whether Taylor rationalises his beliefs, or if not, whether they work at international level. They mutter about his supposed lack of European experience, but in this UEFA Cup adventure, Watford sprang a couple of surprises. They did so too in the FA Cup, when they got to Wembley for the first time ever. And when Taylor left in 1987, it was to join Aston Villa, where he promptly won the fifth promotion of his career. There was a relegation scare the following year, but that was turned last season into runners-up spot in Division 1, the ideal springboard for the England job. In short, Graham Taylor has yet to fail, so he's hardly likely to compromise his ideals now. I dislike people who talk about sophisticated football uh, because I don't think they really know what they're talking about, quite honestly. I never have done and never do, but it suits them to write and talk about it. It makes them look as if they know all about the game and the intricacies, so we create myths about it all. The one match England have played under him did nothing to sway Taylor's thinking. He's always concentrated on getting in as many shots as possible. It's called the rebound effect, and it seems to work. To me, the more shots you can get and the more times you can threaten the opposition goalkeeper, the better chance you've got it of winning a game of football.
Now, is that any different at international level than on the Sunday Park? I happen to believe it's not. On a surface in Shropshire, a far cry from the turf of Wembley, we find the other young manager whose sports night featured 13 years ago. Alan Durban still coaches as part of his major contribution in putting Telford's tennis centre on the map. In 1977, he was in charge at nearby Shrewsbury when he brushed shoulders with Taylor in the third division. His contemporary's success has not surprised him. Durban saw enough to realise that Taylor was destined for higher things. Well, I think he was very clear-minded. He wanted to be in control. And when you saw him with his team, and when you saw him with, with his club, he was in charge of them. I, I think he'll do well because he's basically fairly honest. And he gets his, his players to play. Week in, week out, if you can get your players to play, you're, you're a fairly good manager. And he's always been able to do that. While Durban fell out with the Sunderland chairman after taking them to their best first division position in recent memory and was lost to the game, Taylor kept on running and stayed ahead of the pack chasing the England job. Now he picks his squad with the assistance of his number two. I'm going to bring Dennis Wise in instead of David Broadcastle. The only thing with Dennis, I mean, I had him as a kid, as you yeah. know, so and uh, he stood up to me. He's a big streak of numbers. That's, uh, it's still up to you, reach for well, it. <laughs> I was sitting yeah. down at the time. Yeah, and uh, he's had a, a couple of moves and he's had a big transfer to Chelsea. I saw him early days and he was tremendous. Mm -hmm. But then his temperament That's let him down. Same. He got sent off and he's, he served his suspension. Now, Dennis has got to realise that his ability has yeah. got him in here, but his temperament could be the thing that gets him out. Well, once again, I hope he remembers the little chat. I have had a chat with him early part of the season. That's right, that's right, yeah. Uh, and what we're actually at, but you don't, you, you see, with these lads, you don't want it to take away from the game, do you? Some of no. them need that little bit of aggression. Oh, it's just but there's no the, reason to, you know, doesn't. you must never be outside the laws of the game, but you've got to be an aggressive person. Yeah. And I think you've got to be aggressive, uh, you know, uh, when you're talking he, about He's got more than that, hasn't he? He's got a good, yeah, he's got good a passer person. of the ball. He's got, his delivery yes, of set pieces is spot good, on. Yes. We'll, put, we'll let him know anyhow, ah. and then it's up to him. That's I mean, right. if at the end of the day, he ends up misbehaving on the pitch again, OK. He's got himself out. It's not, not going to be. Taylor and Laurie McMenemy both placed discipline high on their list of priorities. And as they face the media, determined to forge the best possible rapport, they're obviously aware of what happened to Bobby Robson, both personally and professionally. BBC viewers were left in no doubt six years ago as to how Graham Taylor felt the England manager had been treated down the years. How we treat England managers in our country is absolutely disgraceful. I mean, I didn't know Walter Winterbottom. I was a player when Sir Alf Ramsey was the manager. Now, what makes a man like Alf Ramsey not want to talk to press, not want to talk to his fellow human beings? Because that's really what it is. What makes a man want to do that? What makes a man like Don Reavy actually uh, defect, as people would say? Now, everybody can come up with cynical answers to all of that, but what makes a man do something like that? What makes a man like Ron Greenwood having England run in Hungary, want to resign before actually getting to the World Cup? And what makes a man like Bobby Robson look like he has looked in the last month or so? Well, I'll tell you, it's people in our game with their petty jealousies who feed the press, who don't want the England manager to be successful, who don't want to help him, who are so insular. It's people who feed the press and get the press people to say things and hide behind it. It's then the press themselves who do the most abysmal things. I mean, I think there's something going on where one of the national newspapers were talking about getting badgers out, about Robson must go and, and, and Brian Clough must come in. What sort of treatment is that of people? What do we expect? We actually destroy fellow human beings, and of that I want no part. <laughs> You're now in that same seat. Yes, but I still want no part of the kind of thing I was talking about, because it will still go on. There's no doubt about it. I mean, as much as I would support People in my profession, I think we all would recognise that we're a bit naughty with one another now and again, and that we do feed stories, and that by the very nature of, of, of being human beings, that the, the envy and the jealousy does come into it, and we sometimes like to see people have rough times. There is only one England man. It happens to be me now, but the bottom line is this, John, results. At the moment, and one game, one win. <laughs> one game, one win. So the time to get out is now, I suppose, really. <laughs> the sound of hitting a football thrilled me. Now, my playing career is over. I'm very fortunate. I'm a manager. 
and I'd like to remain one. It's just simply so I can hear a football being struck. Well, the jacket, actually, it represents my first bad buy. There was many more after that. I mean, uh, but the ones afterwards were, were players. That was, but I had to negotiate for that jacket, you know. I was in uh, Morocco and I had to negotiate for it. But whatever price I paid for it, and I know what I paid for it, I'm not going to tell you, it was far, far too much, far too much. But fashions have changed. But sentiments haven't really, John, because at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the day, as, they, as they we're all inclined to use that phrase, it's why I just, when a ball is kicked, when a game is played, when you're in on a football pitch, I just have a feeling in the pit of my stomach that this is where I belong. <laughs>